Welcome to our Star Wars Super Mario and Street Fighter Alpha 2 hint video. This is so jam-packed that we're going to get started right now with Shadows of the Empire. Star Wars has never been better as a video game thanks to the graphics power of the Nintendo 64. Developed by LucasArts and published by Nintendo, Shadows of the Empire is supposedly the story of what happens between the films Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Yet Han Solo is in the game, so there must be some overlapping involved. The hero is Dash Rendar, a hired gun similar to Han Solo. The adventures span over four chapters. Part 1, Battle of Hoth. Part 2, Searching for Boba Fett. Part 3, Hunting Luke's Assassin. And Part 4, The Dark Prince of Caesar. Before we continue with the rundown on each of the levels, you need to know two things. First, Know that you can always verify the control settings for each level by entering the option screen during gameplay. You will find the same information in the instruction manual as well. Second, the challenge points are merely a gimmick, included only so that the game can be said to have high replay value. Obtaining all challenge points does not change the game's ending, but you will get a code that enables you to use the Lebo scanner. This device is like an x-ray that lets you find hidden areas in the game that were previously inaccessible. Big whoop. The real action begins on Hoth. You must destroy every Imperial ship that is taking part in the invasion of the hidden rebel base. The first part of this battle requires you to destroy only probe droids, but after that task, you must fight not only the droids, but also the AT ST walkers and the gargantuan AT AT walkers. With so many enemies and dangerous crossfire, you might feel overwhelmed. Here's a hint destroy the little guys first, shoot all the probe droids then the AT-ST walkers, and finally, the AT-AT walkers. Whenever concentrating on shooting an enemy, be sure to press the L or R button to break. This gives you more time in the air as you approach your target, thus you'll get more shots in. While near the AT-AT walker, press Z to attach a tow cable, then fly in circles around the walker's legs. When the camera angle switches, do not change your grip on the control stick in accordance with the new perspective. Keep pressing in the same direction. Try to fly close to the ground so you can see your ship's shadow. The shadow will tell you how close you are to the walker's feet. Obviously, you don't want to crash into them. Many gaming magazines make a big deal out of this level. Apparently, some can't get enough of it. Admittedly, it's fun to trip the big walkers and watch them explode, but the action is nowhere near as fun as in the next level. Level two, the escape from Echo Base, is a Doom-style level, one of five in the game. Shadows of the Empire is much better than previous Doom titles, though. Doom has always had perspective warping and floating play control. Shadows has none of the warping and only a smidgen of loose play control. Ten challenge points are hidden throughout this level, and while it's fun to find them, you shouldn't try until after you've beaten the level. Stormtroopers guard the hallways. Apparently, your efforts in the first level were not a complete success. They got in anyway. All of this sounds just like the beginning of The Empire Strikes Back. Be careful of the snow monsters. You may recall that one of these creatures hung Luke upside down and killed his tauntaun. Anyway, you might as well avoid them. Leave them in their cages. Their claws will seriously damage you. But if you want to be daring, go ahead. They're easy to defeat. By the way, doors and switches are activated by pressing R, in case you never bothered to check the option screen or read up on the controls. Your objective in this level is easy to complete, so we really don't need to tell you how to do it. You must activate the emergency generators to open the cargo bay doors so you can flee in your spaceship. Find the right elevator, ride to the next floor, then shoot the stormtroopers camped out in the room there, and flip six switches to fully power the generators. Then head for the exit, which is not the way you entered. You'll know you're reaching the end when the ground starts to break open like in the Ten Commandments. If you want, stick around for the challenge point that will appear, then race to the end of the icy corridor. If you don't collect much ammunition on your way through the base, don't fret, because the boss is easy to beat, even with your simple laser gun. The boss is an ATST walker. You battled several in the last level, but you weren't on foot at the time. Do not try to shoot the boss from the platforms on the walls. You'll be an easy target. Get behind the walker, press and hold Z, then take aim at its head with the control stick and start shooting. The walker will start turning around fairly quickly, so cease fire, get behind him again, and repeat. Enjoy the explosion once you whittle his energy meter down to zero. Don't rest on your laurels, though. This level is still not over, but don't panic. All that remains is another silly challenge point and a race to your ship. Oh, I never did tell you that it's a different ship. 
you will not be making your escape with the ship from the last level. Otherwise, you would have left off long ago. Duh. But you had to complete this level in order to escape in your own personal ship, the Outrider. A smaller version of the Millennium Falcon, the Outrider is Dashrindar's prized possession and the central component of level three. The level is boring. Just shoot Imperial TIE fighters and any green atomic bombs they may send your way. The asteroids rarely come into contact with your ship, but play it safe and blow up any that come near. Six red asteroids will appear throughout your battle in space. Each one will net you a challenge point if you blow it up. To make life easy, keep the B button pressed throughout the entire level to produce a constant stream of rapid fire. Be aware that this level has two camera settings, one from outside the ship and one from inside the cockpit. Choose the one which is most comfortable for you. Level four is on Ord Mantell, a place that is referred to only once in the entire movie trilogy. You get to ride a freight train through this barren wasteland in your search for the mercenary droid IG-88. Physics plays a role in this level. Try not to jump from car to car during a tight turn if you can avoid it. If you can't avoid it, just be sure to get the right angle of the dangle. Forgive our silliness. What I mean to say is to line up your character so he is jumping into the turn. Use the strafing option frequently. By pressing and holding R, you can sidestep right or left. Further in the level are yellowish-red colored barricades. For some reason, it may not occur to some players to shoot them. Perhaps that is because they think they must jump over the barricades. At any rate, the boss is the biggest challenge of the level. Drop down from the train and seek shelter from IG-88's powerful laser blast. You should be able to find a room with two tall, narrow, orange-colored, organic-looking columns. Get in this room and stand behind the columns. You do not need to be pressed up against them. You could stand in the back of the room if you wanted. Just be sure to be behind the columns. This little cranny is a safe spot from IG-88. You may have to strafe left or right just to find the right vantage point, but from there you can shoot IG-88 without him shooting you. He is too dumb to see you behind the columns. Once in a while his blast may scratch you, but all you have to do is move around the room a little bit. The boss will frequently leave you alone for long periods of time and then come back. So if you want to speed the game along, you should step out of the room and bait him back. Level 5, Gaul Spaceport, is long and arduous. The setting is reminiscent of Tatooine, Luke's home planet. You'll explore a canyon system in the middle of a desert. This part of the game is relatively easy, but once you find the hidden Imperial base in the canyon walls, the challenge picks up significantly. Don't be alarmed though, you'll make it. Crossing the abyss via jetpack is the first big obstacle. This task is easy if you know how to operate your jetpack. The left C button turns the pack on and off. When on, press A to use the jets. Press forward on the control stick as you press the A button to get more mileage from each boost of the jetpack. You must land on the next pillar, turn the jetpack off, wait for the jetpack to regain 100% energy, then move on to the next pillar. Before taking off for the next pillar, line up your character so that he faces straight at the next pillar. With this technique, your flight across the abyss will be a beeline for the next pillar, with little room for navigational error. Don't forget that once you cross the abyss, you will need the jetpack in later portions of the game. So if you're ever stuck, recall that you can fly with the jetpack. The worst part of this level are the three bosses. Yes, three of them. In order, these bosses are an ATST Walker, Boba Fett, and Boba Fett Spaceship, Slave One. The ATST Walker is easy to defeat. He's the same as the one on level two. After you beat the Walker, flip the newly revealed switch, fly to the top of the wall nearby, and enter the second shaft from the right. Make your way carefully through the rest of the level, using the jetpack for breaking falls and rocketing skyward. Boba Fett is one nasty dude. He is very difficult, but we found a secret for success. Only attack Boba when he's on the ground. At those times, use your seeker weapon, but be sure to aim exactly at Boba. Your aim must be perfect to inflict any damage. Try to get in several shots at one time. When Boba starts to come your way, book it across the battle arena so as to keep a safe distance from him. Then turn around and aim for another barrage of shots. If you run low on energy, there's a full power up high atop the wall, and lesser medical aids are found outside the battle arena far below. You can get them by heading for the corner of the room and falling through the opening, but cushion your fall with the jetpack. Boba should die fairly quickly, leaving the final battle with Slave One. Other sources say you should try to get behind and under the guns on the ground. We say that's too hard. The trick is to fly to the top of the screen, then let yourself fall with the jetpack on. 
Your slow descent will enable you to shoot at the ship's weak center as you fall. It doesn't make sense, but your constant movement will elude the ship's guns. Apparently, these guns aren't high-tech enough to figure out that you're simply moving downward. You won't be able to beat the ship in one falling, so repeat the process when you hit the ground. Seeker missiles are useful once again, as are pulse weapons. After you beat this mother of a boss, you will have completed half of the game. Moss Isley is host to level 6, a land speeder race to find Luke. We can cover this level quickly. As you encounter other speeders, force them to crash by kicking left or right with the L and R buttons. Do not try to run neck and neck with them like in the movie Return of the Jedi. Let them get a little bit ahead, but still right next to you, then give them a good kick. You will eventually leave Moss Isley in the dust and head out into the vast desert, crossing Sarlacc pits and navigating Beggar's Canyon. There you will find Luke. In level seven, you sneak aboard an Imperial freighter ship. The ship contains secret plans for the new Death Star. As you know from Return of the Jedi, the Emperor purposely led the Rebels to these plans. You may know this is a trap, but your character doesn't. Make your way through the ship's innards and blast anything that moves. When you encounter the rotating drums, who knows what they really are, stand as far away from the edge as possible. Duh. Duck under the high arms and jump over the low ones. Hop to the next rotating disc and from there jump to solid ground near another elevator. In the cargo room, the first order of business is to destroy all the little enemies in the room. These droids are true pests. Their lasers are plentiful. On the far side of the room, there are three sets of three switches. Flip the fifth switch from the right and the third switch from the right. These switches open big doors on each floor of this massive cargo room. You must flip more switches on the opposite side of the room as well, where there are two sets of two switches. Flip the two innermost switches, the two in the middle. Now all the necessary cargo doors will be open and you can proceed through the ship. The boss is called a loader droid. To beat him, you must use a similar technique to the ATST walkers, only you can't get behind this droid. The loader droid will turn to face you at any moment. Shoot him from the front with your best weapons. Make sure your aim is right on. Accuracy is the key here. Strafe left or right away from the big brute when he starts to get too close to you. You don't want to feel the impact of his inspector gadget-like arms. Keep shooting and strafing, shooting and strafing. Eventually you will win. Level 8 may remind you of the trash compactor in Star Wars. The sewer creature from the movie is also the boss of this level, a Dianoga. The sewers are fairly easy and fun to navigate. You'll need to explore a maze of old rusty pipes and shafts very carefully to find a key to the big doors halfway through the level. Use the overhead camera in the shaft so you can see all four walls around you. You don't want to miss an opening that may lead you to the key. If you use that hint, you won't have any problems finding it. This leaves only the boss as a remaining challenge. Remember beating the Slave 1? You need to use that technique. Fall in the water as you shoot up at the Dianoga's eye. Although blasting its tentacles does not harm the Dianoga, you will need to do so just to keep them at bay. Try to concentrate on the eye with your best weapons. When they run out, your blaster will suffice. You may need several lives to beat this boss, and don't forget to go up for air when you need it, or you'll drown. The Dianoga is fun to battle, but you'll be glad when it's over and the water recedes. Fly up to the hole in the center of the ceiling to exit the level. You use the sewers to secretly enter Caesar's palace. In level nine, you need to find your way through the palace and place bombs in the long tower that connects the palace to the skyhook out in space. We'll get to the skyhook in a minute. When you get to the tower, fall down to the very bottom. Don't turn on the jetpack until you've fallen well below the bad guys above. From the floor, you can aim and shoot at the guards on the catwalks high above. Getting rid of these guys from here will save you from being shot by them once you make your way to the tower. The column in the middle of the tower has three places for you to put the bombs. Take your time doing this. When the task is done, a new door will open near the shaft from which you entered the tower. Find it and hightail it out of there. The boss is the gladiator droid, a complete nutcase, tough to crack. Follow behind him and shoot with your regular laser blaster, just as you would an ATST walker. Once you destroy his legs, that's right, only his legs, you will need to fight his torso next. Do this from the ground. Aim up at him and blast your seeker weapon. Use the same technique when fighting just the head. This is easier said than done. This boss is absolutely the hardest part of the entire game. May the force be with you. The final level is easy if you know what you're doing, and that's what we're here for. This level is in two parts. The first part is a repeat of level three. The second part is the attack on the skyhook. The skyhook has four long, extending arms near the bottom of its structure. 
On the very tips of these arms rest gun turrets. You must defeat each gun turret either with regular shots or with missiles. After you trash all four turrets, enter the inside of the skyhook by flying straight into the tips of the arms where the turrets were. This part is so much fun. You will be reminded of the assault of the Death Star in Return of the Jedi. The goal is the same here. Reach the center and blow up the core's main reactor. Use your brakes, button R, to give you time to react and swerve around the metal walls in the arm. Shoot the blue core three times with the missiles, then exit via another arm. You might wonder why the Skyhook hasn't blown up yet. Unlike the Death Star, this core must be destroyed from each side. Once you exit the arm, head back into the Skyhook a second time. Don't enter the arm with fire coming out of it. That's one you've already cleared. Blast the core with three missiles from each of the four arms, then get out before it blows. Unfortunately, you automatically die in the easy mode. If you want to see the ending where you live, beat the game on at least the medium mode. Just for your information, the game does not contain any new endings for the remaining difficulty levels, so you don't need to beat the game on hard or Jedi. You won't miss anything. Thanks for hanging with us for this hint session. After the Star Wars stuff, you'll find what is called B-roll footage. This footage contains tell-all clips from Mario 64, plus every single ending from Street Fighter Alpha 2 for the PlayStation. Now we'll show the easy ending then the medium ending. This way, you'll have seen everything you need to see. Here are the two endings. Hello!
so much for to playing my game. Big guy.
This is just the beginning. God has protected you. It will always be with you. Claire. Sherry. What was that? Warning, biohazardous outbreak imminent. The emergency system has been activated. This train will detonate. Repeat, this train will detonate. No! What's wrong with this thing? I don't know. The door won't open. You're both safe. Just die. 
We've got to get out of here. Move it! Go! <sighs> that was a close one. That was pretty impressive back there, Sherry. It was nothing. I saw someone do that on TV once. Come on, we've got to move out. Now what's the problem? Is something following us? Hey, we still have a job to do. Let's go. Go? Oh, you can't mean. Chris, I have to find you. <laughs> Resident Evil 2. Your discretion is advised. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
as a maniac. Why'd he bite me? Hello? Is anyone here? Hello? Uh, hello? <gasps> Look, I'm sorry I bothered you, okay? Just don't come any closer. Are you listening? Stay out here. Head to the police station. It'll be a lot safer. Radio's out. You're a cop, right? Yeah. First day on the job. Great, huh? Name's Leon Kennedy. Nice to meet you. Mine's Claire. Claire Redfield. I came to find my brother, Chris. Hey, could you open the glove box? Sure. There's a gun inside. Better take it with you. I'll meet you there. Okay. <gasps> hey, get over here! Hurry! I can't sit her down. I'll drop you a rope ladder. Grab onto it. Come on. Just a little more. Get off me! Sorry. I thought you were another one of those zombies. Are you Chief Irons? Yes, that's me. And just who are you? No, don't bother telling me. It makes no difference. You'll end up just like all the others. That's the mayor's daughter. I was told to look after her. But I failed, miserably. Just look at her. She was a true beauty. Her skin nothing short of perfection. But it will soon putrefy and she will turn into a zombie within the hour like all the others. There must be some way to stop it. In a manner of speaking, there is. 
either by putting a bullet through her brain or by decapitating her completely. And to think that taxidermy used to be my hobby. But no longer. Please, I'd really like to be alone now. Wait. Let me go! Easy, easy there. I'm not a zombie. You're safe now. <laughs> My name's Claire. What's yours? Sherry. Do you know where your parents are? They both work at the Umbrella Chemical Plant, near the city limits. The chemical plant? Then, what are you doing here? My mom called and told me to go to the police station because it was too dangerous to stay at home. From the look of things, I'd say she was probably right. But it's dangerous here as well. You'd better come with me. But there's something out there. I don't know what it is, but I saw it. Much larger than any of those zombies. And it's coming after me! What was that? That's what I was telling you about! It's here! Sherry, wait! Sherry, I've been looking everywhere for you. I was so worried. We've got to go now, honey, okay? If we stay here, that monster will find us. Let's go. No, I won't. What's the matter? <laughs> Don't you trust me? It's not that, Claire. It's because of my daddy. He's over there. I heard him call my name. Daddy must have been attacked by the monsters! I have to help him! Wait, Sherry! Don't go alone! Sherry! Sherry! <laughs> so, you've made it this far. Not bad, girl. I'm not letting anyone leave my town. Everyone's gonna die. Calm down, Chief. What happened? Shut up! You couldn't possibly understand what's happened. Those monsters from Umbrella have destroyed my beautiful town. How could they do that to me after everything I've done for them? So it's true. You have been working with Umbrella. Then you must know about the G-Virus. What is it? Tell me! If you must know, it's the agent that can turn humans into the ultimate bio-weapons. Superior to the T-Virus in every way. Dr. William Birkin is the genius behind the project. William Birkin? I'm sure you've already seen his little girl running around here somewhere. Sherry, isn't it? In case you haven't already figured it out, the monster that's been tearing my precinct apart is yet another product of the G-Virus. An ultimate bio-weapon. Umbrella must be trying to cover its tracks. But if I have to go, I'm going to take you with me. Claire, 
you came back! I can't believe the man who developed the G-Virus is actually her father. What's wrong, Claire? It's nothing. But I think I found a way out of here. We should be able to find some place safe if we can just make it out of town. But... Don't worry, I'll protect you. I promise. But you have to make sure you don't leave my side. What happened? You're bleeding! I, I... I ran into this woman who is in trouble. Her name's... Ada. Right after that, someone tried to kill me. Nearly succeeded, too. Ada went after the sniper, but... I, I'm worried about her. You gotta find her before... before something happens. But you've been shot! I'll be okay. It's Ada I'm worried about. Are you all right? What happened? Get away from me. You just want my husband's key sample, don't you? But no one will take that away from me. No one. Husband? Then you must be Annette. Huh? How did you? We don't have time for that. Sherry is lost somewhere in the sewer system. I have to find her. What? I told her to go to the police building. Why is she here? Now Sherry and the G sample are both in danger. Oh. What did she mean by that? Does Sherry have the G sample? You're okay. Sherry, did your mom give you something called G-Virus? Either a vial or a test tube? G-Virus? I've never heard of anything like that before. Are you absolutely sure? If you give it to me, I'll hold on to it for safekeeping. But I really don't have anything. It's the truth. Why would her mom say something like that?
What was that? Don't worry. Just wait here. I'll go and see what it was. Isn't this... That's okay. You keep it. I'm sure it'll keep you safe. Wait here for me, okay? I'm going back to look for your mom. Thanks, Claire. Even though I'm an only child, neither of my parents ever spent much time with me because of their work. But now that you're with me, I finally have someone to rely upon. Sherry... Where's Sherry? But I asked her and she's never even heard of the G-Virus before. Which room? Tell me. Sherry! No! Annette! The samples inside the pendant Sherry's wearing. Sherry! Help me, Claire! The monster's after your pendant! Throw it to me! Then go get it! Sucker. The self-destruct sequence has been activated. Repeat, the self-destruct sequence has been activated. This sequence may not be aborted. All employees proceed to the emergency car at the bottom platform. Sherry, you have to escape. I know I've been a terrible mother, but I still love you. Forgive me. 
Flights of Fantasy, our interview with Gail Tilden, plus some hot news from Acclaim and Squaresoft. We talked with Nintendo game counselor Alan Ballardinelli. He showed us Virtual Boy and some of Nintendo's other hot products. Let's listen in to what he had to say. I'm here with Alan Ballardinelli from Team Nintendo. How are you doing, Alan? Great. Oh, good. This is quite a spread you guys have got here. Thanks. You're showing off all the hot new projects that are coming out. Yeah. Now, tell me, we've heard some news. What's happening with Ultra 64? Well, Ultra 64 has pretty much been completed. It's the ultimate in video game experience, true three-dimensional everything. It's uh, the top-notch system. Is this Everything going to be a true 64-bit system? True 64-bit and Mythos processing, which means basically it is the 
top. Nothing will beat it. Okay. It's going to be delayed until April 1996. It's going to be shown initially in Tokyo in November, and then we're going to show it at the, at the uh, Winter CES in Las Vegas in January. Okay, well, we'll be looking forward to seeing that. It's going to be fantastic. Okay. Right now, though, what's coming out soon is Game Virtual Boy. Yeah, the Virtual Boy is coming out in the middle of August. It's going to be $179.95. Going to have one game title packed in with it, and it's uh, it's amazing. It's a true 3D immersion. Okay, so this this has got the goggles that you actually put over. What you do is you put your face into the display. The display sits on a table. As soon as you do that, you're in a three-dimensional world all of your own. It's amazing. You really have to experience it to believe it, and uh, until you do, you really you really can't know what it is. Okay. How many games are going to be available for that when it comes out? Uh, currently, Nintendo has five titles that will be available when it comes out. We're going to have about a dozen titles in all from licensees about the time it comes out. And we've got almost a hundred companies who have signed up to develop titles for it. The computer programmers feel really challenged by it, so they're excited about doing work on it. Yeah, it is quite a cool system. Um, why is it in black and red? It's in black and red for a couple of reasons. One is uh, the price. Multicolor displays are really just expensive, and we want to make sure that as many people as possible can experience this. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that red is a really low power draw color, and of course, all the important signs are in red. Your eye tracks on red really well. Okay, what do you think the price point is going to be for this? Um, $179.95, and the cartridges are going to be between $39.95 and $49.95. Oh, so so very they're going to be comparable to yeah. the cartridges that are out now? Definitely. Very affordable, and everybody will be able to experience it. All right, well, that sounds like fun. What's the next hot thing coming out here for one color? Well, after uh, Virtual Boy comes out, and that's going to be huge, about two weeks after that, Killer Instinct is coming out for the Super NES. That's now that's the biggest uh, arcade game out in the country now, isn't it? In the arcades right now, there's nothing bigger than Killer Instinct. And it's going to be out looking almost exactly like the arcade title. All the same moves, all the combinations, combo breakers, humiliation moves, everything's going to be in it. It's truly amazing. People have been shocked at this show to see what we've been able to do. Okay. Now that'll be on the 16-bit cartridge. Yeah, on the 16-bit cartridge at the end of August, and it's going to be about $74.95, I think. I understand for Christmas we're going to have a sequel to last year's big blockbuster, Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, that's right. Actually, uh, as a game counselor, the number one question I've been asked since Donkey Kong Country came out, other than how do you complete this level or that level, is when are we going to have another one? People have been really excited about the game. We're going to have another one that looks better than Donkey Kong Country. Its title is going to be Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest, is going to be out in November. It's amazing. Uh, Diddy and his new friend Dixie go through uh, a huge number of stages, more secrets in Donkey Kong Country, more levels to find Donkey Kong, who's actually been kidnapped this time by the uh -huh. evil Kremlins. All the Kremlins are new, they've all been reanimated, they're on pirate costumes and that sort of thing. There's new friends for Donkey and Dixie, it's an amazing game. How many levels is this one going to have? I haven't had a chance to play through it all the way yet, so I couldn't tell you. There's always things hidden. Well, I know Donkey Kong Country had about 100 levels by the time you got through everything. Yeah, by the time you completed 101% of the cartridge, it was uh, it was real big. I still don't know. All I've heard is that one of the engineers has said it's more than Donkey Kong. Oh, wow. So this is going to keep gamers challenged for quite a while. Oh, yeah. It's uh, 32 megs of action. Let's take a look at the hottest thing coming out. Virtual. All right. This way. Nintendo Power beat us to the punch in displaying Virtual Boy's graphics, but when we find a way to make them look good on TV, we'll let you know. Until then, here's an interview with Nintendo Power's Editor-in-Chief, Gail Tilden. Tell us a little bit about the Bible of the industry. Well, the Bible of the industry is, of course, Nintendo Power Magazine. It's Nintendo's own publication, and we've been publishing for about seven years now. This summer will be seven years, actually, since we first came out. Every month we cover all the um, Nintendo compatible products. Well, we have regular features like Pack Watch that's on future games, or classified information as codes and uh, tricks and tips. Um, we have a new section called Epic Center that covers role playing games and um, a lot of features and regular reviews that we do, uh, full length strategic reviews on, on games. 
Okay. How do you assemble the magazine? I understand there's a lot of computer graphics and a lot of... So in a way, you've heard from him before. Here's Ted. Secret of Evermore is our first U.S. product. It's uh, based on the secret of style of gaming, which is an action adventure style, okay. and uh, very much like Secret of Mana. Uh, it uses a brand new engine and brand new uh, graphics and magic system as well. So uh, we think that uh, anybody who likes Secret of Mana is going to uh, be able to use that as a springboard and enjoy Secret of Evermore. Okay. What's the play like with that? The play is, uh, is again, uh, hands-on. You get your hands on a sword, a variety of weapons. What types of weapons do you have? Uh, bones, swords, uh, a variety of different kinds of throwable objects as well. Okay. And uh, again, we've, we've used an STI uh, machine. And we used tools, that's right. And we've rendered many portions of it and blended that with pixel art. So it's kind of a hybrid across. And we weren't, we weren't really aspiring for a shiny uh, fighter style. We wanted to get kind of a nice sort of animation style or anime style. And uh, I think we've really been able to pull us. We're here at Acclaim, who's going to be showing us some of the hot new games that they're coming out with. Get prepared for the ride of your life. Well kids, this pretty much ends a special edition of Flights of Fantasy. Next time on Flights, we have some more exciting E3 coverage featuring Mortal Kombat 3 and Doom from Williams Entertainment. E3 was a long and exhausting show. We learned a lot of good information, we had some great times, played some exciting games, and most importantly, we found out that the 16-bit system is not dead. It's a high priority for all the companies to keep it up and running. Lastly, we're going to end it with our E3 music video, so stay tuned. We're going to continue our exciting E3 coverage with interviews from Williams Entertainment and Sega. We also have a sneak peek at some of Ocean's great new games, including Jurassic Park 2 and The Flintstones. This is quite a show, so stick around. We caught up with Williams Entertainment, where MK are the magic letters, Mortal Kombat. We're talking major marketing here with movies, TV, clothing, and all kinds of merchandise, everything under the sun. Williams owns Mortal Kombat, but they did license it to Acclaim for a while. Mortal Kombat 3 is due to come out on Friday the 13th. It's been unlucky for some folks, but for Williams, 13 is a very lucky number. We were hired by Williams to create Mortal Kombat 3 on the Super Nintendo, the Genesis, and the PC CD-ROM. The goal of the product was to create the essence of Mortal Kombat 3 coin-op and bring it to the home market on those platforms. What we were trying to accomplish is for the player who's gone into the arcade and played the coin-op, that when they go home and they play the home version, they're going to get the same thing. Right, they get all of it. They get every aspect of the product. Welcome back. We also talked to John Tobias and Ed Boone on the right, the creators of Mortal Kombat. Uh, Mortal Kombat was, uh, we originally came up with the idea when we saw all the existing uh, fighting games that were out there and the, the level of graphics in which they were achieved. Um, John and I thought that with the, our digitizing style of graphics and our realism that we could make something that was a lot more of an exciting, you know, intense game. What characteristics did you include into the players? Uh, well, basically, uh, what we wanted to do with the characters was just sort of uh, adapt almost a, a, a mythology. And we took bits of Japanese mythology, Chinese mythology, and then created our own 
uh, backstory and adapted that to each individual character. And that's just a real strong point of Mortal Kombat is that er everybody who plays the individual characters can relate to them, can relate to their backstories. And, uh, and that's just a, almost a secondary element to the gameplay. You know, it just adds to it. Mortal Kombat 3 uh, debuted in the arcade. Everything. Next up on our interview roster is Roger Sharp, licensing director of Williams Entertainment. Some of the hot licensed products that are coming out based on Mortal Kombat. Sure. Uh, actually, Mortal Kombat is spawning, uh, I guess, in its own industry. There are, uh, there's a toy line from Hasbro, uh, a lot of t-shirts and caps and trading cards. I think more significantly, there's uh, 70 different licensors, or licensees doing about 200 products. The big news, obviously, in this year of Mortal Kombat is the feature film coming up from New Line Cinema with Larry Kazanoff uh, producing. It continues just to mushroom and to grow, and they build upon what is a very, very strong storyline and a very, very strong sense of, you know, good versus evil. What makes this the hottest game going? Uh, we're also looking at more animated features. Our last interview of the day is with Nintendo's arch enemy, right. Sega. Sega launched an attack with a Saturn system. Here's Sega warrior Sarah Richmond to tell us all about it. All right, I'm here with Sarah Richmond, who's the project manager of the Sega Saturn. Now, I understand there was quite a surprise for us at the show. Yeah, we blew everybody away and uh, early shipped Sega Saturn um, all across the nation. It's with a heavy concentration in Los Angeles at the time of the show on May 11th. I understand that it's sold out already. Yeah, we just blew them out the doors and uh, it's just having phenomenal success so far as we expected that it would after the success in Japan, which was just insane. <laughs> well, this has been an anticipated project now for about six months or so. Okay. What's the difference between Saturn and the 32X that you just released this year? Well, the, the Saturn has, it just provides a higher level. It's the prestige gaming product. It's a little bit higher price, but the game experiences are just so immersive and so much different. The, it's got CD quality sound. You get different perspectives, which we call dynamic play perspectives. So the camera's always moving to give you the best view of the action. And you can see for yourself some of the games are just amazing. Plus, we've got the tried to arcade games like Virtual Fighter, Daytona USA, which are coming straight from the arcades and are exactly the same. So they're not going to have any transposition that goes straight from the arcades into the Sega Saturn system? Once they prove themselves in the arcades, they'll come to Sega Saturn. So then for those arcade gamers, they can have that same arcade experience right at home. Exactly. Oh, Good deal. I'll get that loud anyway. <laughs> okay. Go and take mm -hmm. action. Come on down. Come on down. Keep pushing in. Push in. Push in. Faster? Yeah. Okay. Set it up again. Okay. Ready? Action. Keep it going. Push it in. 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 Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Freeze it, George. We're in sunny California at the Los Angeles Convention Center at the Electronic Entertainment. Off we go. Wind noise. We got it. We got Okay. Is there a windscreen in that? I can hear the delivery back here. You without headphones, it sounds real good. All right. Okay, stop the tape. This is take two. Okay. Products. All right, George, we're ready to go. Are you ready? Ready to go. All right. Rolling tape. Anytime you're ready, Thomas. There's no picture. Turn on the power. Yeah, it's on. It's coming. Okay. Tape is rolling. And action. We're in sunny California at the Los Angeles Internet. Okay. My fault. Set it up again. Ready? Keep the tape rolling. And action. We're in sunny California at the Los Angeles Convention Center at the Electronic Entertainment Exhibition. This is E3, the largest trade. Uh, okay. Set it up again. Keep tape rolling. And action. Wait. All right. Action. We're at sunny California in the Los Angeles Convention Center with E3, the Entertainment Industry Exhibition. This is the largest... Oh, okay, no problem, George. Set it up again. Ready? And action. We're in sunny California at the Los Angeles Convention Center at E3, the Entertainment Electronic... Okay, set it up again. Keep tape rolling. You ready, George? Ready. And action. We're in sunny California today at E3, the electronic industry. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Take Hold a it. second, stop tape. Rolling and speed. Okay, we have speed and action. 
action. We're in sunny California at the Los Angeles Convention Center at E3, the Electronic Entertainment Exhibition. This show is not open to the public, but we're going to take you inside. Come on. Okay, push into him. Push into George. Push in tighter, faster. Okay, cut. All right, let's try it again. How does it sound on that? Sound good? Okay. Clean as a whistle. All right. Is that Dave's rolling? Stand by for Jimmy. Okay, flow action, George. Follow him, follow him tight. Follow him tight.
descriptive on the game. Like, okay. Yeah, all, that, all the all the stuff, folks. So you need to lower the board. Yeah, players are okay. right here. Sure. Okay. Okay. So this is the sales pitch for the game. Got it. All right. All right. Ready? All right. All right. Your arms rest right out here. Is that comfortable for you? Yeah, this is good. Well, this is something you can just kind of sink right into. The chair's comfortable, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. How long is the is one of these usually? Well, they range anywhere from five to fifteen minutes, depending on what kind of event it is. Mm -hmm.
tennis? Who's Nintendo kidding? We predict Nintendo will relaunch the system with Wario Land or an equally good new game included. Right now, Virtual Boy is dead. We messed up big time here, but have faith. Although it probably won't be a priority till after the N64 is released, Virtual Boy will probably be raised again. It's destined to be that way. Virtual Boy is even better than Game Boy, and Game Boy is more popular than you can imagine. It would be nice if Nintendo made a Virtual Boy carrying case, though. That's the key. It's supposed to be portable. Anyway, on to E3. Virtual Boy. Nintendo Power beat us to the punch. Cartridges that are out now. Definitely very affordable, and everybody will be able to experience it. That sounds like fun. What's the next hot thing coming out here for on color? Well, after uh, Virtual Boy comes out, and that's going to be huge, about two weeks after that, Killer Instinct is coming out for the Super NES. Welcome to this edition of Flights of Fantasy. I'm your host, George Wood. On today's show, we're going to take a look at our E3 show from last year. Why? Well, E3 is just around the corner, and we thought you might find it interesting to hear our opinions and just some plain cold hard facts about the electronic gaming industry from last year as compared to this year. At the end of the show, we'll comment on Virtual Boy and Super NES games in general. Where is the future of video games headed? There are a lot of rumors floating around, some of which are really wild. So keep watching, we'll sort through the mud for you. Right now, enjoy a blast from the past, E3 from 1995. I'm here with Alan Ballardinelli from Team Nintendo. How you doing, Alan? Great. Oh, good. This is quite a spread you guys have got here. Thanks. You're showing off all the hot new projects that are coming out. Yeah. Now, tell me, we've heard some news. What's happening with Ultra 64? Well, Ultra 64 has pretty much been completed. It's the ultimate in video game experience, true three-dimensional. Everything. It's uh, the top-notch system. Is this Everything going to be a true 64-bit system? True 64-bit and Mythos processing, which means basically it is the top. Nothing will beat it. Okay. It's going to be delayed until April 1996. It's going to be showed initially in Tokyo in November, and then we're going to show it at the, at the uh, Winter CES in Las Vegas in January. Okay, well, we'll be looking forward to seeing that. It's going to be fantastic. Okay. Right now, though, what's coming out soon is Game Virtual Boy. Yeah, the Virtual Boy is coming out in the middle of August. It's going to be $179.95. It's going to have one game title packed in with it, and it's uh, it's amazing. It's a true 3D immersion. Okay, so this this has got the goggles that you actually put over. What you do is you put your face into the display. Okay. This place it's on a table. As soon as you do that, you're in a three-dimensional world all of your own. It's amazing. You really have to experience it to believe it, and uh, until you do, you really can't know what it is. Okay. How many games are going to be available for that when it comes out? Uh, currently, Nintendo has five titles that will be available when it comes out. We're going to have about a dozen titles, and it all from licensees about the time it comes out. And we've got almost a hundred companies who have signed up to develop titles for it. The computer programmers feel really challenged by it, so they're excited about doing work on it. Yeah, it is quite a cool system. Um, why is it in black and red? It's black and red for a couple of reasons. One is uh, the price. Multicolor displays are really just expensive, and we want to make sure that as many people as possible can experience this. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that red is a really low power draw color, and of course, all the important signs are in red. Your eye tracks on red really well. Okay, what do you think the price point is going to be for this? Um, $179.95 and the cartridges are going to be between $39.95 and $49.95. So, so they're going to be comparable to yeah. the cartridges that are out now. Definitely. Very affordable and everybody will be able to experience it. All right. Well, that sounds like fun. What's the next hot thing coming out here for on color? Well, after uh, Virtual Boy comes out, and that's going to be huge, about two weeks after that, Killer Instinct is coming out for the Super NES. That's now, that's the biggest uh, arcade game out in the country now, isn't it? In the arcades right now, there's nothing bigger than Killer Instinct. 